check out this really cool micro interaction. It's basically a hover based drop down navigation. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this by reverse engineering it from this website that I saw that I think is really awesome. So the tools of choice for this tutorial will be HTML and SAS. That is it. Typically you might use GSAP or the Greensock animation platform for this sort of thing, but I thought it'd be cool to show you how to do this the pure CSS way. So let's get started. All right, project structure real quickly. We simply have an index.html here. I already have the HTML written out. I will overview this real quickly. Uh, we're linking up a style sheet of CSS forward slash main.css. That's in here. We're using SAS for this, so make sure you watch that SAS with the live SAS compiler. And currently, we only have two rule sets in the SAS. We'll get that to that in a second. So control B, get rid of that sidebar, and let's take a look at what's happening here. So Essentially, we're starting off overall with this nav element, and this nav element wraps around everything, all right? Inside of there, we have this big old beefy juicy link, and inside of that A tag, we have this section, and it's really kind of just a, uh, a duplicate of each other right here and here. It's, everything's ex exactly the same with exception to this area hidden equals true. So the reason we have two of these where it says work as the anchor text and work here as well is because we wanna create that effect where we take the span class enter with transform translate Z and move it up. So I like that effect that you saw, you're gonna see these two little work buttons right here which currently look ugly. Uh, they're gonna transition between those two pieces of text. We also have the span class icon, which is this thing right here. It's currently all screwed up. We're gonna have to style that with CSS with just a simple SVG element inside. And then we have our section class dropdown with an unordered list with a list item and some links inside of it. Nothing exciting happening there. That's what that currently looks like over there. So now let's get to the fun stuff. So this is our CSS here. Um, just a body, background, uh, margin zero, font family pop-ins, nothing exciting happening here. Of course, you'd wanna import that from Google Fonts if this was our serious project. And then we're just taking all of our links here and just making them color black and text decoration, none. Okay, so I, one thing, the first thing I wanna do is fix this big old ugly looking <laughs> drop down arrow. Um, to do that, I'm not gonna be doing anything too exciting. We're just doing span icon here with a background of black. Uh, we're taking the width and the height uh, to um, five enemy units, the border radius to 50% to round that off, a position absolute, uh, which is gonna allow us to take this circular icon and position it to the right of its parent element, which is gonna be position relative. Uh, that's why we also have right here a right of zero. Padding point three and display flex actually helps center that SVG icon in the middle of it. All right, after that, we're gonna go ahead and work on the SVG itself, because currently we don't really see it. It's just this tiny little square, this blip over here. So we're gonna do SVG. We're gonna do a width of 0.5 M units and a transition of transform 0.6 seconds. Now this is gonna come into effect um, when we add a hover state on the nav element that will transition and basically rotate that arrow upwards. So this is what this is for, so we get a nice smooth animation. After that, or inside of that rather, we're gonna take the path itself. We're gonna say stroke white and fill none because it does have this black fill in between the arrow itself. Can't really see it because it's so tiny, but once we uh, work on the next part, we'll fix that all up. So let's take our nav and what we're gonna do is go right here, nav. Uh, padding bottom, we're gonna set at uh, five M units. And this is something you really can't see the effects of just yet, but it has to do with uh, giving our, the nav container itself some white space underneath that unordered list at the bottom. Um, then we're gonna take a span.inner and we're gonna say transform, translate Y to zero and transition transform to 0.6 seconds. All right. So what this is gonna do is um, our span.inner, if you recall up here, is this element right here, these two elements. So initially we're setting the trans, uh, the transform translate y to zero, and then we wanna transition it once we change this value based on a, a future hover effect that we're going to add. All right, after that, let's also take this, this link right here. Let's get this working, because we see work, work, and it's really small. Let's work with that. So we're gonna say an, a, so we're selecting the um, the direct A tags right inside of here, which simply means we're selecting 
this element from nav. All right. What we're going to say is display inline flex. We're going to go ahead and give this a height of 1.2 m units. So we need ex explicit height because we're going to specify overflow hidden. So these two properties right here work hand in hand to allow us to hide the type, if that makes sense. Now we're gonna take the uh, flex direction and make this column. At this point, now it's hidden. Uh, there's actually a work text right around here, but because we use overflow hidden in a, an explicit height, we don't see it anymore. After, after that, we're gonna give ourselves a font size of five rem, it's very big. Now it's starting to come and take shape. You can see now that our down arrow is looking good. We're gonna go also and specify justify items center. That's gonna center things vertically there. And then I give ourselves a line height of 1.2 M units. Didn't really seem to change much, but it actually centers this work text inside of the container uh, itself. And then we're also going to put position relative, which is gonna shift over that position absolute uh, child element right there. And then finally, to push that over, we'll do a padding right of 1.5 M units. There we go. Now, of course, we don't have this interactivity yet because we don't yet have the hover state. We'll get to that in a second, but first let's get our drop down section styled up here. So the, the drop down section is right here. Section class drop down with an unordered list inside of it. So section drop down. Inside of here, we're gonna specify a position absolute because remember we needed to go behind everything. So a Z index negative one, that will shift it behind everything. And then a background of white, sorry, type Gary, type. And then also a top of zero, a height of 60 viewport height, a width of 100%, a display of flex, because we wanna take the unordered list, that's the only element inside of this current rule set, and we wanna position it with align items flex end to the bottom, as you can see right here. All right, after that, we're gonna go ahead and specify a transform of translate Y of negative 100%. I'm not gonna, actually, we're not gonna save this just yet. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second because I do want to take our unordered list and we're going to say list style type. Let's just get that styled first before we start hiding stuff. Margin bottom is going to be five M units and then margin left will be three M units. And then finally, we're going to take our list items and inside of there, we're going to have some other stuff. Uh, but in a second, we're just going to put an A, a, a element to take the font size to two rems. All right, looking better, we need to get this uh, situated with the proper uh, margin and such. So we have to come back up here. I forgot to add a margin of one M unit. There we go. So this is what it's supposed to look like essentially for the most part once you hover over it and this slides down. Okay, so let's work on the actual interactivity and the micro interaction up here with the, uh, the work and getting those two pieces of work anchor text transitioning upwards. So we're gonna go ahead and come right here inside of our nav. And inside of there, we're going to have a, just right here, an and hover and span.inner. Remember span.inner is right here, these two elements. So we're gonna be transitioning those based on a hover. So we simply say transform translate y of negative 100%. Look at that. Look how nice and smooth that is, I love it. Okay, um, after that, we're gonna take our icon. So let's just copy this real quickly. This is gonna be span.icon, uh, which is this icon over here, the SVG down arrow. And, oh, actually no, it's the, actually the black background behind it. We're gonna say background gray. All right, so it just makes it gray on hover. Let's go also paste this. This is gonna be the I, uh, icon SVG, and we're this time, we're not gonna use translate, we're gonna use rotate Z. And then we're gonna change this to 180 degrees, which will make the arrow point upwards. There we go. So now if I zoom up, I'm not sure if this is gonna work properly. Let's see, ah, move over, there we go. We could better see it, awesome. So now, after that, we need to make our drop down 
come down. Now, right now we see it, so we need to go ahead and take opacity zero right here on our list item. And with that said, we also have to put a couple of transition properties. So transition, transform, uh, we're gonna say 0.5 seconds. Now these are for the individual links right here. So we also wanna transition the opacity of 0.5 seconds as well. We're gonna give it a transition delay of 0.3 seconds because we don't want this uh, them to animate instantly on hover. So we're gonna delay this by uh, 0.3 seconds. And then we're gonna do a transform of translate y of 40 pixels. All right, so we're, they're gonna come up as well, as well as fade in. All right, so we're gonna save that. Notice how it's, it's hidden here. Now we need to take our section drop down, and we have to give that that transform translate y. And we're gonna do that negative 100%, which is gonna push it to the top of the browser. And we also wanna transition that as well. So that gives us a nice animation. All right, so let's go ahead and make that kind of come down based on hover. So to do that, all we have to do is, let's just copy this real quick, change this to section.dropdown, and this is gonna be translate Y. There we go, and this is gonna be zero. So let's try it now. Great, so it's coming down, but we don't have our links yet showing up. So to do that, all we have to do is in hover UL li and we simply say transform translate y zero and then also opacity one because we want those to show up obviously all right so let's check this out now they're all coming in at the same time it's a very subtle animation it's going up 40 pixels and it's it's just coming in but they're all all the list items all four of them are coming in at the same time so we can create a stagger animation very simply by doing nth of type. So what we'll do is an nth of type one, transition delay 0.2 seconds, shift alt down a few times so we get one, two, three, four, so we can select all of them, and then just do three, four, and five respectively, and there we go. That is it. Let's take this and pull it out. So we can kind of see it a little bit better. Oh, it's my buddy, Michael Malwich's uh, Twitter I was checking out. All right, there we go. Look at that. Now, of, co of course, you know, this could work well like as a section on your, your landing page or you know, in the, the initial example that I showed you from which I gained this inspiration, it could work in a nav bar. Of course, you would just have to uh, scale down the size of the type right here and the SVG and it could work uh, great inside of an actual nav bar. Awesome, awesome stuff.